Monday morning It was all I hoped it would be Oh, Monday morning Monday morning Couldn't guarantee That Monday evening You would still be here with me Monday, Monday to the Polly Price Podcast. Here's your host, the jack of all trades, Polly Price. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the Polly Price Podcast on this Monday, April 6, 2020. Got some crazy things going on in the news. We're going to talk a little bit about WrestleMania this weekend. Of course, like I always do, I'm going to give you my movie and song of the day. But like always, let's see what's going on. In the news. This is your COVID-19 update. The number of COVID-19 cases has started to subside in the U.S., with the total over 330,000 and a death toll over 9,500. Thankfully the recovery rate is rising with over 17,000. But the next two weeks will be crucial in the United States fight against the coronavirus, warn health officials, who are urging Americans to continue practicing social distancing measures. With the number of cases continuing to rise, President Trump on Saturday offered a grim picture of what's to come, telling Americans, there will be a lot of death. Kavanaugh Bell is a seven-year-old on a mission. To help other people and let them know that I got their back, he told CNN. At a time when senior citizens must stay in to avoid the coronavirus, the spirited boy in Gaithersburg, Maryland, decided to make them care packages. The packages include toilet paper, some flushable wipes, hygiene products and a bunch of food. In sports, in a conference call with Major League Sports Commissioners on Saturday, President Donald Trump said he believes the NFL season should start on time in September. Sources familiar with the call told ESPN. Trump also said he hopes to have fans back in stadiums and arenas by August and September. Sources said although it is currently unclear if medical experts find that to be a realistic timeline amid the current coronavirus pandemic. This was your news update. It's good to hear that the numbers in U.S. are definitely subsiding. Hopefully it continues and people stay home and we stay safe and uh, we continue to beat this thing and hopefully get back to our normal lives. Um, And it's also good to hear good news about that seven-year-old who was doing the right thing and trying to help the older people with getting groceries and all the supplies that they need. It's, it's, It's good. That's why I wanted to report something nice in the news for once. And kudos to that kid for doing the right thing. All right, we're going to go to sports, being that there's no sports going on, but we are going to talk about WrestleMania. A lot of things happened. We had day one on Saturday. We saw Braun Strowman win the Universal Championship. We saw the Kabuki Warriors lose their tag team championships to Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. The Undertaker on the first night annihilate and bury AJ Styles at the end of day one. And on day two, we saw a lot of good matches. I I think day two was definitely the better day. We saw the Firefly Funhouse match, which was uh, pretty interesting. I really loved it because it it, it was a good storyteller. And being them not having fans, I thought it was really cool. Another match I really liked, although it was short, but it was supposed to be short and sweet, was the Drew McIntyre and the Brock Lesnar. It was everything I wanted it to be. I wanted Brock to come out and try to annihilate Drew. And Drew to basically show how strong he was. And we got to see that. So I really loved that match. A lot of people were crying about it. But screw them. I loved it. I actually thought this was a pretty good WrestleMania. Considering there was no fans. And that they were limited to who they were going to use. And things changed. It actually wasn't that bad. The first night was okay. But the second night definitely hit the mark for me. Because I I, I definitely had a couple of WrestleMania moment feels in, in that show. But uh, again, I want to commend everybody for doing that and keeping us entertained in these times. All right, now it is time for the movie. Crushing death in three. You made a mistake. Of the day. The movie I have chosen today came out in December 4, 2019. It made $249 million in the box office. This movie was directed by Sam Mendes. 1917. Field fortifications, defenses, artillery, the like of which we've never seen before. The second are due to attack the line shortly after dawn tomorrow. They have no idea what they're in for. 
and we can't warn them. As a parting gift, the enemy cut all our telephone lines. Your orders are to get to the second at Kwasi Wood, one mile southeast of the town of Akust. Deliver this to Colonel Mackenzie. It is a direct order to call off tomorrow morning's attack. If you don't, it will be a massacre. We will lose two battalions, 1,600 men, your brother among them. You think you can get there in time? Yes, sir. Any questions? No, sir. Good. Over to you, Lieutenant. Supplies, gentlemen. Map, torches, grenades, and uh, a couple of little treats. Leave immediately. Take this trench west up on Sorky Hall Street, then northwest on Paradise Alley at the front. Continue along the front line until you find the Yorks. Give this note to Major Stevenson. He's holding the line at the shortest span of no man's land. You'll cross there. It'll be daylight, sir. They'll see us. No need to be concerned. You should meet no resistance. Sir, is, is it just us? Down to Gehenna or up to the throne, he travels the fastest who travels alone. Wouldn't you say, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. I would. Good luck. Where is it? It goes from here to the door. Who the hell are you? Lance Corporal Schofield, sir. Eighth. I have orders from General Erinmore to call off this attack. You're too late, Lance Corporal. Sir, these orders are from Army Command. You have to read them. Shall we hold back the second wave, sir? No, Major. Hesitate now. We lose. Victory's only 500 yards away. Sir, please read the letter. I have heard it all before. I'm not going to wait until dusk or for fog. I'm not calling back my men, only to send them out there again tomorrow. Not when we've got the bastards on the run. This is their last stand. The Germans planned this, sir. They've been planning it for months. They want you to attack. Read the letter. You're listening to the Polly Price Podcast. If you see something sketchy, call the guys at Catching Pest Control at 718-395-7500. 718 718- 395-7500. You can also visit their website at catchypestcontrol.com or give them a follow on Instagram at catchypestcontrol. Servicing New York and New Jersey. Hello, ladies. Look at your man. Now back to me. Now back at your man. Now back to me. Sadly, he isn't me. But if he stopped using ladies' scented body wash and switched to Old Spice, he could smell like he's me. Look down. Back up. Where are you? You're on a boat with the man your man could smell like. What's in your hand? Back at me. I have it. It's an oyster with two tickets to that thing you love. Look again. The tickets are now diamonds. Anything is possible when your man smells like Old Spice and not a lady. I'm on a horse. You're listening to the Polly Price Podcast. Here's your host, 
the jack of all trades, Polly Price. All right, we are back. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you liked that clip about 1917. It was a really great movie. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely see it. It's got a lot of uh, great moments in it and definitely some good historic knowledge for you to learn because it definitely was a great storyteller. All right, now we are approaching the end of my show. Like I always do, I'm going to give you the song of the day. It is a remix of the original from the 1980s. So the song I present you for the day is Orgy with Blue Monday. So this is Paulie Price signing off saying, stay safe, not stupid. <laughs>